the I jump in there yeah. Nick, because I think what you've just said is super important and I found this a massive paradigm shift myself when I really understood this that for the average woman the woman who's at the sort of the top of the bell curve if you like the beginning part of perimenopause up to say 45 if you like 45 46 mid midway through those 40s for for most of us it's our progesterone which is lower than our estrogen so often you know we are finding we have an ovulatory cycles we get more and more of those and our progesterone is relatively steadily dropping down and of course progesterone has a massive effect on our gut etc and then from our mid 40s onwards that's when we're getting these big surges of the estrogen as our, our ovaries are going, one more baby, one more baby, last chance for baby, if you like. And it's that differential between the estrogen and the progesterone that can be really tricky and and, and cause a lot of symptoms. But then and sort of when we're getting towards our 50s, that's when the loss of estrogen, the estrogen starts to really plummet, especially around 50, 50, 51, 52 plummeting down as we go into the actual final year of menopause itself and so that stage can be a little bit of a different picture from the beginning of perimenopausal stage so I thought that was really good how you said that kind of 10 years 12 years of perimenopause we we can actually need to be looking at different things on our plate over that span it, it was I hearing